Welcome to my channel Lano Eat. In this video, we will going to discuss about the circulatory shock, and also we will going to discuss about the stages, the types, and the treatment of the circulatory shock. The circulatory shock is an important topic of the cardiology physio, and this shock is related with the failure of the functions of the heart, ultimately causing the decreased blood flow to the tissues of the body. And when there is a decreased blood flow in the tissues of the body, it will lead to the hypoxia of the tissues that causes the anaerobic respiration to start and causing the acidosis and other conditions that causing the cell death. So, what is circulatory shock? First, we have to discuss the definition of the circulatory shock. It is characterized by generalized inadequate blood flow to the body so that the body tissues may damage because of the hypotension and the hypoxia. It is a condition in which there is a decrease in adequate blood flow to the body tissues and the blood flow is so much decreased that the body tissues become damaged and they because of the condition there is a hypotension means decreased blood pressure and the decreased blood flow and the hypoxia because the decreased oxygen capacity or the decreased oxygen ventilation perfusion ratio. Hypoxia is another topic that I have discussed in separate video or types, the conditions and the causes of hypoxia. So the hypotension and hypoxia of the tissues causing the damage of the tissues because of the decreased blood flow causing the circulatory shock. The condition is circulatory shock. So the stages of the circulatory shock include the three stages. The shock can be mild. The shock can be moderate and the shock can be severe. In the mild circulatory shock, the blood loss is less than 10 to 20 percent. That is not much. While the pulse rate and the blood pressure remains normal. The urine output is normal because the blood loss is very much less and it does not affect the body function. In the moderate shock, what happens? The condition becomes worsened. The blood loss increases to about 20 to 30 percent. The pulse rate increases because of the decreased blood flow to the tissues. The heart is going to pump more and more and the pulse rate will increase. Also, there is oligouria that is a decreased amount of urine output. Why? Because there is decreased retention of the fluid in the body and decreased blood pressure hypotension. So, to increase the blood pressure, the kidney retains the fluid and in this condition, the urine will be concentrated and less in the volume. So, the condition becomes oligouria. But what happens if this is not treated? The moderate shock is not treated. It will lead to the severe shock that cannot be reversible. And ultimately, the death will occur if the severe shock is going to compensate. It's not going to compensate it. In the severe shock, the blood loss is greater than 40 to 50 percent of the body. The total cardiac output decreases, and in this condition, there will be rapid increase in the blood pressure. There is a high respiratory rate with the high pulse rate. The end urea condition can occur that is no urine output. No urine will be released because there is a very much decrease in the blood pressure in the body. Also, the functions are damaging. You can see the blood loss is about 40%. So, how the urine output can be normal? The body fluid loss very much. So, the urine output will become low and it will causing the end urea. Now, coming to the conditions that cause this sh circulatory shock. There are sub stages of this shock. We divide this shock into four sub stages that divide into different causes. Now, these four stages include the hypovolumic shock, the cardiogenic shock, the obstructive shock, and the distributive shock. What happens in the hypovolumic shock? As the name suggests, hypovolemia. This occurs in the conditions of hemorrhage or the increased amount of blood loss. In the hemorrhage or in the burns when there is a loss of plasma from the body fluids causing the decreased blood volume and causing the decreased filling pressure of the heart that causing the tissue ischemia and when the tissues become ischemic they will ultimately die. So the hypovolume means decreased blood volume because of the condition hemorrhage or burns and any other condition accident or any other thing causing the hypovolumic shock. The second shock is the cardiogenic shock. This shock is related with the cardiac activity. When there is decreased cardiac activity, the cardiac uh, activity is decreased, the heart cannot pump enough amount of the blood towards the body. Also, there is a decrease in the oxygen 
decrease in the venous return towards the heart and decrease in the tissue perfusion ratio that causing the decrease in the cardiac output and ultimately causing the cardiogenic shock. The third type we can see here is the obstructive shock that occur in the condition in which there is any obstruction towards the area or flow of the blood supply or there is a decrease in the blood flow because of any obstruction in the pathway of the blood flow from the heart towards the body and from the body parts towards the heart. So also causing the de decreased tissue perfusion ratio and decreased amount of oxygen. Here the oxygen delivery will be decreases towards the tissue and oxygen demand increases so causing the obstructive shock. The fourth type of shock is the distributive and this distributive shock is again divided into three major shocks that is the septic shock that is caused because of the any sepsis that is a poisoning blood poisoning caused by any bacteria mostly from the gram negative bacteria causing the sepsis causing the septic shock because of uh, certain conditions causing these bacteria to develop in the body causing the sepsis infection blood poisoning and causing the septic shock the second shock is the neurogenic shock that occur in the condition of brain damage or the other condition that we're going to decrease the activity of the vasculature system and increasing the capacity of the vascularity it means that increased amount of the blood is required for the brain to work because of the decreased tissue function of the brain so increased amount of the blood required but the heart cannot pump it going to the circulatory shock condition the third type of distributive shock is the other shock that we call as the uh, Neurogenic and anaphylactic, yes, the anaphylactic shock is a condition in which what happens, the anaphylactic is a condition in which there is an allergic reaction. There is a reaction between the antibody and antigen causing the release of the histamine-like products and the breakage or the uh, production of bradycanins from the mast cell and causing the allergic reaction. So, increased amount of allergy or increased amount of antigen antibody reactions causing the anaphylactic shock that includes the hay fever, the hypersensitivity types, all this. So, these are the four major reasons of causing the shock that is a circulatory shock. We will going to discuss now. I think you have been explained until now. Now, we are going to discuss how to treat this shock. If there is any circulatory shock in the moderate or the mild condition, we can treat it. But in the severe condition, we cannot treat the circulatory shock. It may causing the death of the patient. So, we should know to uh, check the vitals and monitor their values to cause the, uh, to know about the you can say the progress of the shock can be known by the checking these vitals that it is in the mild shock or the moderate shock so can be corrected by improving the tissue perfusion ratio by increasing the oxygen content by increasing the blood pressure by increasing the cardiac output you can correct this type of shock increasing the venous return towards the heart causing the increased tissue blood flow and tissue perfusion ratio causing the ultimately correction of the, the, these shocks in the conditions can be hypovolemia, cardiac shock or any other type of shock can be treated with these conditions with the checking and monitoring of the vital signs, the ECGs and the urine output is also a major indicator of the stages of the shock. So this was all about the circulatory shock. I hope you'll be explained well. These notes are made for you guys. If you have any query, comment below. Give feedback on our Facebook page. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.